It's the Faith Walk Talk Show. We talk about all things faith. So don't grow weary, so not fear that you'll never get there. Our recording. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Faith Walk Talk Show. I am so excited. If I could tell y'all the trouble that me and my guests have went through to make sure that we could get this recorded, y'all would not imagine. So I'm excited for what she's going to share with us, how she's going to bless us. I'm, I am just, I'm kind of in a, a lot of, um, just a lot of like it's in my stomach because a lot of times when you go through a lot of turbulence like that to get something done you know God is coming to bless he is coming in to help us so I'm excited for um for Miss Janelle Davis to be on here welcome Miss Davis how are you I'm good thank you so much for having me I am excited to be here I love what you're doing awesome awesome I have been able to talk to some awesome women of faith and we do this um i do this because i am i give away a woman of faith award every year uh to women working in ministry and just to get the conversation started about faith and why it is so important and how it has helped so many people in, um navigate life how god has blessed them be through their faith um and through that faith, um, it has produced other people into women of God. Um, I, I'm a product of that. Um, I had women of God in my life that helped me and nurtured me along the way. And so I honor those women. I honor the God in those women. I love on these women. I try my best to uh, create a safe space for us because so often women are just not celebrated in ministry. So I am excited. Let me um, w welcome you again. I'm excited. And uh, let me tell you a little bit about this, our guest speaker um, this time. Miss um, Janelle is a wife. She is a mama. She has five beautiful babies. Um, she, her passion is letting God's light shine through her for the purpose of inspiring, encouraging, and leading others to Christ. I love that. I mean, it's 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 so simple, but yet so impactful, right? Because it's so important that we all have a hand in in some in some form or fashion. I can think back even over my life, where you know it was someone who said something to me, or someone who did something to me, and show it was it was a small little gesture, but showing me Christ. And so I'm so glad that um that that you're passionate about that. I think that um. This is how we this is how we be fishermen is when we're passionate about encouraging and inspiring and leading others to Christ. So um, I, I introduced you a little bit, but you go ahead. You tell the people a little bit more about you, because I know there's way more than just what I was saying. Um, well, like you said, I'm a wife and a mother. Um, that's my most important job for me. Um, five children one teenage girl that's a lot of fun um <laughs> and i am a business owner i own a business called the royal sunflower i make soap and body care products um i'm also in school right now to become a licensed esthetician um and so i hope to eventually have a business where i always say that self-care is more than skin care um, and I really have a passion for skincare, but I feel like I could be the best esthetician in the world. But if we don't address what's going on the inside of us, um, it's not only is it hard to make the outside look better if your inside is not balanced the way that it should be, um, but I feel like it's kind of pointless. So that's, that's a little bit about me. Well, I love that point because you're so right. Um, I had another speaker where she talked about, you know, um, when you don't address those issues, they manifest on the outside, you know, right. whether that through sickness or hair loss. I know some people so stressed, they start losing their hair. You know, that's hard to look beautiful when you don't have any hair or feel beautiful when your hair is falling out. So um, I, I agree. I think that is a is a very good point to make on addressing the inside first. Um, and I always say, one of my things I say is you always got to work on your stuff. 
And yeah. the stuff I mean is like the stuff that you are carrying around, whether that's childhood trauma, whether that's in, be, feeling insecure, not feeling good enough, you know, just all that stuff, you know, or you feel like you have some type of stigma on you because, you know, you had a child at a young age, it's just, you know, you got to deal with that stuff, you know, um, because it, it sometimes hinders you from being the best you, right? right. Um, I, what I love about these talks, um, it has gave people um, the encouragement to stand up in who they are and and not feel ashamed of who they are, but feel empowered by it and, be, and feel empowered in the sense of that God, um, he is not a respected person. He can use anybody and it doesn't matter how messed up you are, how about anything that you've done in your life God still loves you and he's still coming after you because he loves you you're precious to him and so um I love that I think that's awesome and it just leads me into just saying just how the enemy um distracts you um from purpose from just finding God right and or even just seeing God in a situation right sometimes you can you have that you know you're dealing with so much of that stuff you you don't you can't focus on God right you can't right. focus on the things that are leading or uh, things the things of God you know ministering to people loving on people you know um and so um the the lies that the enemy has told you what what are some of the lies that the enemy told you I'm not good enough um nobody loves me Nobody cares about what I'm going through. Nobody understands. That's that that was a big one for me. Um, it's no point telling anybody because nobody understands how you feel. Nobody understands your pain. And I think that a lot of times we underestimate the power of our pain and the power of being vulnerable and sharing our pain with other people. Because a lot of people feel like they can't be vulnerable or show their pain because it'll make them seem weak not realizing that we get strength from that from each other like if I tell you what I'm going through and it's very hard and it's very difficult and you're like same thing is happening to me and you know it's kind of a light bulb like oh I'm not alone you know and for me I struggled with depression for a very long time and um what I've learned in going through that is that isolation is the enemy of deliverance so when you're depressed you kind of want to withdraw you don't want to talk to anybody you don't want to be around anybody um and you need people you need people that love you when you feel hopeless you need people that are going to speak life into you that are going to remind you hey you can do this i care about you if you need something i can help you so when you start to get really sad and you pull and you pull away from everybody really the only thing um, that you have left in your mind is the enemy telling you that nobody cares. Nobody notices that you're not around. Nobody's calling to check on you because they don't care. Um, and so I just think it's really important that we, that we understand that there's power in our struggles and there's power in, in sharing our stories because it gives other people hope. It's like you were talking about the women of faith in your life. You, you had an example to follow. You had a blueprint. And I believe that faith is contagious. So if you have a woman of God in your life, you know, that, that teaches you the way that um, not only teaches you, but shows you with her life. And I, I had a mother like that. And so there, you know, I think we all have periods of time in our life where we stray away and we think we've grown and we just want to do everything we want to do. Um, but at the end of the day, my mother was always like my North Star, like I wanted to be her. Um, and whether you have a good mother or, you know, a mother that may not um, have the best tools for raising you or showing you faith, most of the time you're going to emulate what you see. So faith is definitely contagious. And um, I think that there's elements to faith. Right, so we have to get comfortable understanding that it's okay to hurt and it's okay to say, hey, I'm hurting and I need help. Um, and I think sometimes a barrier to that is who can you trust? 
because a lot of us don't feel like there's somebody that we can trust to say that. So it's building blocks. Um, God has brought me a long way. Um, and so I just want to, if God shows me how to get out of something and now I have the tools to get out of it, it would be so irresponsible of me to not help somebody else who was in the same boat that I was in. So that's really um, what everything I do is for, because I know that there's people hurting. Yes. Um, and they need hope, you know, and they need somebody to say, it'll be okay. There's purpose. There's purpose on the other side of that pain. When we're in pain, that's all we see is the pain. We don't see what's on the other side of it. So you need somebody on the other side to say, hey, let me help you get over here. Let me show you how to get on the other side of this. I, I love that. And, it, you know, believe it or not, that's such a common thing that enemy does to us is to tell us we're not good enough. Mm -hmm. um, he just keeps reminding us of our past and our mistakes and anything that maybe uh, may have grieved the Lord a little bit, something that we have done. It just he constantly reminds us of, you know, trash instead of uh, us being reminded of we are a new creature in Christ. Um, right. So often, you know, even not only just the enemy, but people in our life. Right. They can they were all they have in their mind and their regulation of an old person. And you have become this new person. Right. And so it's hard for people to see you um, through the new lens, right, of being a new creature. And so I, I would agree. Um, faith is contagious. Um, and people, um, the enemy gets us that way. And I, what I have learned is um, over time is that the, the, my mind has been a battlefield. And I literally have had to say, I was taught this by uh, my co-pastor. I have literally had to say, uh, devil, you don't have permission to speak to my mind. I literally had to, to deny access to my mind because I was just thinking about negative stuff. Oh, this will never work. Oh, they were talking about me. Oh, they don't like me, right? Oh, this. Oh, you know, oh, I, I'm not even good enough for that. I don't even know why I, I would even try, right? it all started here for me. And like, yeah. when it starts here, it manifests in your life, right? So yeah. the hurdles, the hurdles that you have to jump over are really here. It really starts here. Yeah. Uh, just knowing that um, God is with you and he will help you through it. Um, but you know what the thing about it is, when we're so caught up in our stuff, we forget to invite him in our stuff, right? We forget to say, Lord, I need your help. Um, with this, you know, Lord, I, I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm not qualified, God, but you know, God, give me the wisdom and the knowledge to operate as if I am an industry leader, right? Give right. me the wisdom and knowledge to operate like I am a um, multi-billion dollar corporation, right? You got to ask God for those to give you the help over those hurdles, right? And a lot of times, listen, when we invite him in, he, he does exceedingly, abundantly, above all we could ever ask, I think. But we just have to make sure that we invite him in, right? And what I love is that God loves on us. He helps us. But I love the fact that um, how ministry in the marketplace really go hand in hand. People don't really talk about that. But how is it that there's count Christian counselors? That's, that's hand in hand right and so those people god has imparted in them they've learned they took the time to learn how to help people who really need help who are hurting right and so when you went through depression did you get counseling or or did you um do something else i didn't get counseling um i think for me depression the first time that I realized that I was sad more than I should be, I was 13 years old. Mm -hmm. So it's not, um, I mean, there was patches where it was worse than other times, of course. Um, but I lost both of my parents very young. I lost my mother when I was 20, my dad when I was 23. Mm -hmm. So I didn't get counseling. Um, 
and not that it was frowned upon in when I grew up, but it just wasn't really an option. It wasn't really something that was on the table as a solution or a strategy. Um, so I didn't get counseling. I really just trusted God. Mm. Um, and it took a long time to get to this place where I am now, where I feel like I'm not depressed um, and I'm not, I'm not bound by my emotions anymore. Hallelujah. So I am now in control of my emotions. And it's funny because I, would, I always tell my daughter, manage your emotions, control your emotions. Don't let your feelings control you. Um, but it's one of those things where like children do what they're taught, not what you tell them. So I'm telling her to manage her emotions, but I'm not managing mine. Um, and so I didn't get counseling and I, I've always been, I mean, to each his own, but I never wanted to take antidepressants because I felt like once I started, I wouldn't be able to stop. Like I would have to take them to forever to feel good. And that's just not what I wanted to do. Um, and so I struggled with depression for quite a while, but, um, I just always knew I can't really explain it. I just always knew that God was there. And I just always knew that when the time was right, God was going to take it off of me. And that's exactly what he did. Um, I feel like there's certain things that we have to go through. We don't like to be in pain. We don't right. like to be uncomfortable, especially not for 15, 16, 17 years. Nobody wants to do that. Um, but there's certain things that you can only learn about God through suffering. Um, and we, we really glorify the good part and the good things, what God can do for you. And, and, that's great, but sometimes we forget you have to suffer as well. Like, So we, we got interrupted yet again, but the devil is a lie. Miss Janelle was in the middle of telling us about um, some struggle about struggle. So go go ahead. Right. So um, there are certain things that you can only learn about God through suffering. And uh, we don't want to suffer, but we have to understand that in order to be anointed, you have to be pressed. You have to be stretched. Faith is not faith until it's tried. So if you're very easily deterred, um, then you're not ready. And so I think a lot of times uh, we're waiting for God to do something, to show us something, to show us a miracle. And I love what you said about asking God to give you um, the wisdom to you know, work like you run a, a multi-billion dollar business. Because a lot of times we ask God for things, but we don't ask God for plan. We don't ask God for strategy. We don't say, God, what do you want me to give up in order to receive what I'm asking you for? Like there's, there's rules to this. There's order in the kingdom. So it can't be just gimme, 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 gimme. And you're not growing, you're not evolving you're not blessing others and it's not always monetary you can bless other people with the words of your testimony you can save somebody's life just by i want you to know god loves you sometimes i'm compelled to to share things with people that i really don't want to share <laughs> if i can be honest 
Um, but I have to be obedient to the spirit because you don't know what somebody is going through. God knows. God knows what people are going through. And he knows it's not always necessarily even, you know, that your word might save their life. But I believe that every word plants a seed. So somebody could have said something to somebody 20 years ago that just stuck. Like it was 20 years ago, but they still remember it and they still feel a certain way about it. And then you come along and you add more water to that seed by being obedient to what the spirit is telling you to say to this person. And over time, that seed grows and that person's soul is saved. And we, you know, I think that the world we live in now, we want so much instant gratification. We want everything to happen now. Um, and I just think that if we, if we really get in tune with and be obedient to God's voice, um, we could see so much more miracles and manifestation and broken chains and deliverance. I feel, I feel like um, faith is obedience. It's easy to do what we want. You know, our, our human body is wired to do what we want. It's, it's a little more difficult to listen to God and to do what he wants, especially when what he wants is not necessarily what you want. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Now, you made some really good points. When you said the sacrifice, it made me think of when Abraham had to take Isaac up there to sacrifice him. It wasn't as if I don't believe that God wanted him to kill his son. I believe that God wanted, I, but God wanted to know it was, it, it was a mental struggle. Do I actually go up here? Do I trust God enough to take him up here? You know, and actually lay him down to, to do the act, right? Right. It wasn't that that's what God wanted him to do. God wanted some wanted to see some obedience. He wanted he wanted to know what is your yes really a yes? Is and that if hard? that yes is really a yes how how are how how much are like you said how much are you willing to give up right you know and that so when you said about that um sacrifice that's what came to my mind I was like that is so true because it comes with a sacrifice you know it, it, you have to sacrifice um not you have to sacrifice that um that time where somebody wronged you and you never got that apology sacrifice that hurt to God, sacrifice it to God. You know, you have to sacrifice that time where, you know, someone told you no, they, they denied you access, right, to something that you needed, you know, whether that was a friend or a friendship, right, or mm -hmm. access to a program or something that you needed, right, um, they wouldn't let you in the group, right, the sacrifice that hurt and that Access denied to God, because I, I can tell you now, I it was so many times where I was like, oh, I don't fit in, you know, I don't have friends like that, you know, and I never really just understood why God protected me from, and, and it wasn't that I didn't fit in, it's just that it was God's protection on me, you know, where he wouldn't let me, um, you know, hang with everybody he wouldn't let me be with certain people because he had a plan and a purpose for my life and so often you know we can get just get caught up in the things that didn't work out or things that's not happening that we forget that God has a plan and a purpose so instead of looking at it like oh this is not happening this is not working um I it took me um six years to finish my associate's degree instead of two right hey you still finished it you right. listen still see still see that god helped you whether it took him six years or it took him two days he still helped you through that right and so i you know and then you talked about um how faith um it's a it's a journey right it's 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 levels to it right and yeah. and how and and how can you tell someone to see to see something to see healing when all they see is pain right how you do it is the word of your testimony yeah. how you do it is, is through the living of your life yes i was sad i was in pain i was in a dark place i thought about suicide i thought about ending my life i thought about things that I know that was not of God, but I tell you, God just carried me through that. And the thing about it is, I think so often we just 
sometimes like when we get really sad, I can speak for myself. Sometimes we sit up and we fester about it, right? We just continue to think about the sadness. We continue to think about, well, what someone did to make us sad. We continue to, you know, we even overanalyze it, right? Well, she said, I didn't like the tone, right? We even go yeah. into the tone of the voice, you know? Oh, I didn't like how she looked at me like that. I know she meant that ugly. You know how the devil, this, and that's how the devil do us, you know? So then we will sit there and we'll fester over it, right? We'll be mad at somebody for 20 years. For nothing. For nothing. For nothing. And I guarantee you, if you carry that back to the person, which we don't do this, because the Bible says if you find fault with the brother, you go back to them. Listen, we don't, we don't, we're not, we don't, listen, we don't be, we don't own it enough. Okay. We don't own it enough to That's take it back word. to the person. We, what we do is we fester in it because if we was working on our stuff, we would have realized that that person did not come to harm us. And they did not come to, to to tear you down inside. They were probably speaking out of a place of help, but we so hurt we can't hear the help, right? Mm -hmm. And 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 if and then listen, and if they were coming to do something ill to you, the Bible says no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Okay. And a lot of times people, and when people are being ugly to you, let's be clear, we are we wrestle or not, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. That's what we don't, that's what we, that's what we're not wrestling with. Okay. We're not wrestling with that person. We are wrestling with the spirit inside that person that's coming after you. And a lot of times what you have to realize is that when, when thing, when, when the enemy comes after you, the way the enemy has attacked your mind has, has continued to attack your mind over the years is that you're going to carry a certain anointing that's going to help people. It's not even, uh, it's an anointing that's going to break a yoke of depression. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's the kind of anointing that you're going to carry because you, listen, I don't believe that you can help someone until you've been through it, right? How do you, how do you, how are you going to tell me you got tools and you ain't never, you ain't never did, you you don't know. I just how. told my daughter last night, I just told her that. I said, you sitting up here sad talking to your little 13 year old friends, all y'all sad, who's helping who? Mm -hmm. I said, if I, if I don't know how to get to the Walmart up the street from my house, I can't give you directions. I can't tell you how to get there if I've never been there. And so stop talking to them. I've been where you are. You come talk to me. I have wisdom. They That's can right. come to you, but they don't have no wisdom. You don't have no wisdom at 13. That's right. And I'm going to tell you where you get the wisdom is in the word of God. That's God, right. listen, and I'm going to tell you this, the, the best part of the Bible to help you with uh, the enemy is the the whole armor of God. Put it on every single day, and you listen. Nothing, nothing is going to bother you. Listen, I love the season. Listen, this is the season to be unbothered. I love that. Okay, I've heard that so many times. Just be unbothered in this yeah. season, like unbothered by words, by looks, by you know, hating. Look, we're gonna have haters. Listen. We're going to have them haters. Hey, celebrate the haters because obviously you're doing something for you for them to be talking about you because if you wouldn't, they wouldn't be talking. I mean, you just have to look at it like, thank you for being a promoter of me. I appreciate you. It doesn't matter if you're saying anything bad. You're still talking about me. You Listen, nobody would know about me if you weren't talking. So thank you so much. You know, you have to look at it like God is still moving in the situation, you know? And I, listen, I really... um appreciate how you have been so vulnerable today and and you know express like really intimate things about being depressed look and this is the thing i think we have all been through depression let's be real life has not been giggles in 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 bubbles my whole life okay let's be real we have everybody has been through struggle we've probably dealt with you know losing someone through you know, losing our, some type of possession or, you know, just feeling like, you know, every, hopeless. I think we've, if, if you haven't, listen, live a little longer. That's what I'm going to say. Live a little longer because life happens, right? And so I, I just love that, that you're so transparent and, and listen, <laughs> oh, I'm so glad we fought the talk because 
um, it was hard, to, you know, it, it's been hard to, to get on the call with you and I'm just so glad. So what, I, um, oh, and I, I just wanted to mention, I, it was another thing you said, um, you said, I didn't get counseling. I just trusted God. If that ain't a faith walk right there, mm -hmm. I, I didn't get counseling, but I trusted God. I'm not opposed to it. I just trusted God. I just knew God was the answer. I listen, period. Just put a period on. God was the answer, period. Right there. Okay. I was like, do you hear yourself? Like, that is awesome. Who nobody says that. Okay, I trust God. Period. Just period. How many times it's, do you hear that? It's the grace for me, if I can be honest with you. Ooh. And I tell you, when I when I have been at my lowest point, I'm talking about laying in the bed crying, thinking about ways that I can kill myself. Mm -hmm. And I hear God, I'm still here. I'm still here. And I think um, I'm just blessed to be able to hear him. Yes. I'm just blessed that the pain didn't drown out his voice. God Ooh. has never left me. And I can't, uh, it's funny, I've been having different conversations with people all week about religion and about different translations of the Bible. And I said, listen, I don't care how many times the Bible was translated. I'm not reading the Bible with an intellectual, um, you, you have to be able to separate the two. This is, this is God's word. This is God. So when I go to my Bible, I'm not reading a story. I'm talking to God. God is talking to me. And that's how I see it. And that's what I, you know, I think it, it all comes down to your interpretation, right? And so if you, um, if you, uh, sorry, I'm being distracted. You're okay, that's so funny. It's okay. <laughs> If you ask God to show you what you need to see, he will show it to you, regardless of the barriers that have been put in place to try to keep you from the truth. God knows the truth and he knows how to tell you the truth. And, and just to add a little more to that is that the, the word of God is true. And when we not only read it, but speak it. I believe in affirmations. And so I say affirmations every single day. And I say it with the word of God because I know the word of God will not return to me void, right? So I I, I believe, like you said, the, the Bible is bread, it's life, you know? And if like you, and I, I'm like you, I have never asked God for something like for an understanding of his word or for him to um, reveal to me what the word means and he not reveal it to me. Right. Because I think, like you said, that's the part of the relationship is when you're reading, he will give you the revelation to understand. It's, and even I, I believe he will even give you the wisdom to apply it in life for you to see it in your life. You know, not only just read to understand, but have some application of the Bible in your life. Right. And what how, what better uh, application is through faith is to show just to believe the things that you cannot see, but you know, are real. You know what I'm saying? If you can't see it, but I know it's real. You know, I, I, I haven't seen God, but I believe the Lord is real. That's faith. Just yeah. have faith that is real, even though you can't see it, you know, and I listen, this faith walk talk is awesome. Okay. And so what are, um, your lotion, your um, business, um, when did you start doing your business? So I started um, selling my products last May, May of 2020. Um, but my, my youngest son is gonna be four this year and he was born with a really severe case of eczema. Mm -hmm. So I've been um, like researching and kind of teaching myself how to make soap for like two years before I even made a single bar. Um, but he was definitely the inspiration behind it because nothing that I was buying at the store was working. And so I started researching, well, what's in these products and why aren't they working and what can I use to make this better? And yeah, 
So I've been, uh, it's been about coming up on 15 months. That's awesome. So, so you, so you started a business in the pandemic. I did. <laughs> Listen, faith again, faith again, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Faith again. Listen, that's a gift. You know, faith is a gift. It's a gift from God. Um, God gives us all a measure of faith and faith is a gift from God. Some, sometimes we need to help people have faith. We have yeah. to show people um, how important faith is and how you walk it out and and how you have walked out faith has been so beautiful and I could just see the light on you um, of having that gift of faith. Um, it just shines a light um, and hopefully when people see this Faith Walk talk show that um, they have a light now to, to walk with and to help guide them that it's just go through it, go through it and trust God, period. Okay. Trust God. Girl, that's a t-shirt. You better, t hey, get you a t-shirt. Trust God, period. Okay. That's a t-shirt. Um, but yeah, so um, if people wanted to um, reach out to you, are you, do you have an email or any, any way where people can reach out to you? Um, yeah, they can reach out to me. So my email, everything is, is basically the Royal Sunflower. So it's uh, the Royal Sunflower at gmail.com. Um, the Royal Sunflower on Instagram and Facebook. Um, so can message me, email me, any of those things. Okay, awesome, awesome. Well, um, just to wrap up the show, um, I listen, I couldn't you couldn't have said it any better than how you said it. Just trust God, period. Yeah. Listen, I, I'm telling you, that's so powerful. Just standing in knowing God is God. Listen, and He He is the Alpha and the Omega. Listen, it's nothing too hard for God. That's what the word says. Is there anything too hard for God? I can't find a single thing that's too hard for my God, the God that created heaven and earth, okay? With right. his with his word, okay? He said uh, and he said light and light was there, okay? That kind of God, that you know, the God that raised Lazarus from the dead, okay? Um the one who will leave the, the the 99 for the one. I mean, I could go on and on. Um, that type of God, just trust him, period. I, I just love that. I it, love it. Whatever it is, God is bigger. We That's, that's all you got to remember. He's bigger. Whatever is in front of you, God is bigger than that. I love it. I love it. So um, do you have any last words before we go, before we end the show? I don't. I just want to say thank you for having me. I really appreciate you. I really love being on your show and I love what you're doing. I think this is much needed in this space um, because it's like you said, women don't get a lot of recognition in ministry. And I believe that not only ministry, but just spiritually in general, women, women carry a lot of weight um, and, and we fight a hard battle. And I, I just appreciate what you're doing. I really well, awesome. Do. Well, awesome. Cause um, I'm, I'm. That's something that I'm really passionate about because, um, I became a wife during the uh right before the pandemic started. So February 2020 is when I got married, and when I've always kind of known that God was like calling me to ministry, but I never just really took it serious. And honestly, I've been in ministry for quite some time. I'm just telling you, it just, listen, I'm a, I, listen, I'm a little slow, but don't count me out to be plumb dumb, but I'm a little slow, you know? And so I didn't really realize I was in marketplace ministry uh, with my apparel business. And so um, when it finally hit me, I was like, oh, wow. So I'm, I, listen, I was praying and talking about God to people back in 2017 when I started my business, for me to hit me in 2020 to realize, oh, I'm really in marketplace ministry. I'm really, you know, because I sell Christian apparel, listen, people come up to me and say, oh, I, that scripture really reminds me of how God blessed me or all oh, this really, rem this really reminds me, um, this is the only scripture, it's a cup, it's a mug I sell, and it says, blessed is she who believes. That's the only scripture in the Bible where God specifically says she. 
Mm. And I thought, and that resonated with somebody. I was like, girl, you sure right. He do love us. He, you know, he just, he love us, you know? And yeah. I just thought, wow, I'm, I mean, it hit me. So over time, now that I'm here, it's like, okay, God, I want to take it serious. God, I want to do what you tell me to do. I want to be obedient because um, obedience is better than sacrifice. And so when I, when I just decided that this, I said a yes, just to be playing, it was yes, God. And um, I just became, God gave me a passion and a heart for women in ministry. And I, what I realized is that I'm a wife, I'm a mother, I'm a, I'm a business owner, I have my apparel and consulting, and we wear so many hats. And I'm going to tell you, if you're anything like me, when you want to operate in excellence, I feel bad when I can't operate everything in excellence. I, right. you know, I struggle with juggling all the hats of being a woman and, in, in, you know, in areas of my life. And so this is a safe space for women. I try to love on y'all because, you know, I know what I need, right. you know, and if I am in a place needing um, to surround myself around other women, because iron shoppers iron and um, needing to be around other women, I know that there's other women that need that same space too. And yeah. so that's why the Woman of Faith Award was created. Um, that's why we're doing the Faith Walk talk show. People, you know, people are afraid to get on the show. And I say, don't be afraid. I promise you, it's just like talking to a sister. It's just like talking to a friend. Listen, yeah. I get excited. Hopefully you get excited, you know, because we're talking about the goodness of the Lord and how how good he is and how he has help me, help you. God is good. And so I hope that when people watch this show, um, that they're helped, that they're edified, that we're building the kingdom for God's glory. Um, and so I just want to make sure that the people who love you, the people that are following you, the people who will watch this, they benefit from this. And so um, I want to make sure I give you a coupon for 20% off in my store. It's going to be Royal. Um, and when the show comes out, that coupon will be available for anybody who wants to use it. So that's my thank you for being on the show. And I will make sure that um, I put all your information on the um, description in the Zoom. I mean, not the Zoom, but on the YouTube page. Okay. So, all right. Well, that's it. You have been watching um, the fifth or the sixth episode. I think this, this is the sixth episode of uh, the Faith Walk Talk Show. And I'm so glad that you stay here to talk with us. Listen, make sure you go check out the Royal Sunflower and look up some of her bath, um, her luxury bath and body uh, uh, products. So anyway, y'all be blessed. Have a good one. Bye.